really don't know where to start or how it all began, but I must have been about 23, 24, when my life just started spiraling out of control. I was dating this older guy, Floyd, at the time, and he was about 60, but I didn't care. I liked dating older men. He didn't mind that I had two boys and one on the way, and he was good to me. He was good to me and my boys. But after dating for about six months, he was diagnosed with prostate cancer. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Now he told me I could go, I didn't have to stay. I was like, no, I'm ride or die. So I stayed, but it was so hard. It was hard watching him slowly die. So after a while, I started looking for something. You know, something to make me feel sexy, make me feel like a woman, something to sexually fulfill me. And I knew just where to get it. Who that? It's me, Linda. What the fuck you doing you back here so soon? I need something. <laughs> Shit. I go out of business, be your ass ever get cleaned up. Hold on, I got you. No, not that. I need something that's gonna turn me on. All right, got what you need. This shit right here is the next level. This will um, turn you on. Is that what I think it is? Oh, hell yeah. At first, I was reluctant to try it. Then I thought, shoot, what the hell? I I'll try it just this once. Man, I took my first hit, and I was hooked. I reached my third trimester, I was a full-fledged addict. Crack had become my medicine. I needed it, had to have it, and wouldn't stop at nothing to get it. Floyd died a short while later, and after that, I didn't have him or nobody looking out for me. So just as fast as I would get my government checks, I would go buy my drugs. Hey. Is your mommy home? Could you go get it for me, please? Hello. Mama, Mama. What, what, what? The Pope are here, Mama. The Pope are here. What the hell y'all want? Miss Merritt, my name is Florence Simon. I don't give a fuck who you are. You can't Simpson. just barge up in please, my house. Please, Ms. calm Mary. down. Don't tell me to come. It's my house. Miss Merritt, we're here because we're responding to a hotline call alleging severe drug use, and we're just here to investigate. So I need you to answer some questions. Okay. That's a goddamn lie. Don't nobody in here know me. Don't nobody around here know me. What you want? All right, Miss Merritt, how many children do you have? <sighs> what you want with me? I, I'm going to need you to answer a question. Don't, don't let him hurt me. He's trying to hurt me. Ms. Merritt, have you been taking any illegal substances today? Get out of my house! I live here, you don't know shit I've gone through in my life! I don't have to ask the okay, shit! What? I don't have to you! We're gonna Get have out of my house! We're gonna have to Get out of my house! Let me go! Don't touch me! Don't hurt me! Why everybody wanna hurt me? Your right to have an attorney! I 
knew I had to get clean and get my life together. I started feeling guilty for putting my unborn baby in harm's way. And I hated myself for all the pain I had caused my kids. The social worker told me if I completed drug treatment and therapy, I could have my kids back. So I enrolled in a 30-day outpatient program. When I had nowhere else to turn, I had to talk with God. I said, God, if you let my baby live, I would love him unconditionally. No matter if he was ugly, retarded, or deformed. And you know what? God answered my prayers. My third son, Timothy Floyd Bateman. He was born with ten little fingers and ten little toes. Oh, he was perfect. I consider him my gift from God because, man, I did so many drugs while I was pregnant with him. He should have never made it. And to my surprise, social services let me keep him. All I had to do now was stay sober so I could get my other two back. It didn't take long for me to realize. Drugs were all over my building. I knew the woman upstairs in 2B didn't drink or do drugs, so I would just pay her to watch Timothy while I did my drugs. Soon I had lost everything. And I had no place to go. I didn't have no family. I didn't have no friends. I didn't have nobody to turn to. It was just me. Me and my precious baby, Timothy. You got a dollar? Yeah. Okay. Thank you. You know, there's a shelter not too far from here on Lake Street. We went there already and they said all the beds were full. They have to take you. You got a baby. Do you have any friends or family I could drop you off to? I really hate seeing you this way, sister. Listen, you can stay with me just for tonight. And we'll figure something out tomorrow. Now, I live three blocks away. Oh, man. I don't even know you. So what you gonna do? Now, he could catch pneumonia sleeping out here at night. Just promise me you won't hurt us. Scout's on. Hey, it's small, but it's home. Make yourself come. The bathroom's the first door on the left. You hungry? I think I might have some soup or something in the cabinet. No, I ain't hungry. Well, I figure you and the baby can take the pull-out sofa. And I'll make myself a, a pallet here on the floor. Don't do that, Walter. Don't do that. We can sleep on the floor. No, no, no. I insist. Now, Linda, I have one rule in my house. No drugs. You think you can handle that? Wow, am I in the right apartment? Stop it, come on in. Dinner's ready. Put the bag down. And you got the big chicken. Work with me, girl. <laughs> I talked to my social worker today. Mm -hmm. She said that she enrolled me into this inpatient program. Oh. But there won't be no bed available until two weeks. 
So, I was thinking maybe you let me and the baby stay here and then I'll clean up and I'll cook. Walter, you won't have to do nothing. It's just two weeks. I already have a maid. Shit, you need to fire her ass then. <laughs> Please, Walter, it's just two weeks. Mm. You want some more macaroni? No, 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 baby. Two weeks, huh? Yeah. 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 Turns out Walter was a man of his word. So I kept my word. But on my last night there, I wanted to repay him for being so nice to me. Hey. You don't have to do this. You insist. Three weeks into my program, I found out I was pregnant again. I was so angry with Walter. That bastard told me he was sterile and like a damn dummy, I believed his ass. Then when I went and told him I was pregnant, he insisted I get an abortion. Said having a baby with a crackhead wasn't in his plans. I didn't even believe in abortion, so I never even considered it. All I had was God by my side. And somehow, that was enough. After a long road of addiction, I finally got clean and got all of my boys back. Timothy grew up to be such a fine young man. He reminded me so much of me. Marcus was the athletic one, James was the smart one, and Nehemiah was the girl crazy one. But we grew close as a family. They were becoming men now, and I was so proud of them. Your daughter, boy. I'm waiting for you. Yeah, come on, man, take that. Seems like Go just on, when I start to get on the right path, something knocks me back down. I can remember it like it was yesterday. No matter how hard I try to forget it, it just keeps playing over and over in my mind like a broken record. And that's all you got? Yeah, boy, you going down. That's when I come in. One, two. There you go, you left your ribs open. Left your ribs open. You going up, all right? Hey, yo, Tim. Hey, yo, hand my lightweight. You know, where you at? I don't know, probably still in the bathroom. Damn, even Vaseline in the break, boy! <laughs> you going up, all right? Oh, man. You take that, boy. Who the man? You know, let's talk. Oh, man, you don't talk in that mess when you dead, dead, dead. Sit right here. You ready for this? You ready for what? Oh, yeah, boy. Sweet. Sweet. You feeling lucky, punk? There we go. Keep your guard up, all right? Oh. Hands up. There we go. Come on, man. Oh! Yeah, take that, boy. Who the man? Man, I let you win. Man, you always talking that mess when you dead, dead, dead. <laughs> oh. What was that noise? Hey, come on. What was that noise? All right, we'll turn it down. Where's Timothy? I don't know. He's in the bathroom dropping by. Stop that. Turn that shit down. Timothy! Oh, you take that, boy. Did you hear that? What? Never mind. Open the door. No, he's in 
change in the blink of an eye. Accidental suicide. Huh. I don't think Timothy knew that gun was loaded. Hell, I, I'm still trying to figure out where the gun came from. It's just so many unanswered questions. Is it better to have something for a short period of time than never have it at all? Was God punishing me for my past? I felt like someone had just ripped my heart right out my chest. But surprisingly enough, I didn't go back to using drugs to cope with the tremendous amount of pain I was feeling and the suffering and the loss I was enduring. Instead, I prayed. I prayed and I asked the Lord for strength. I had unfinished business with you, Timothy. I needed to tell you, baby, thank you for forgiving me for doing drugs while I was pregnant with you. God had truly given you to me as a special gift, and I will always, always love you. I miss you, baby. As the days turn into weeks, and the weeks turn into months, I knew, I mean, I had to get my life back together and back on track. So little by little, I began to pick up the pieces. Timothy used to love this. James. So, it's okay. He did, huh? He'd be sitting over there playing with his spaghetti, <laughs> sucking one between his teeth, <laughs> and making them stupid noises. I remember that time Timothy was running. And he ran straight into that ball. Oh, was like, <laughs> oh <laughs> yeah, yeah. Wait, wait. Because <laughs> he was looking at that big head girl. Yeah. What was her name? Um, Sheila. Yeah, yeah. fast, because I know her mama. <laughs> <laughs> wow. That night I had a dream about Timothy. It was like I woke up like I was possessed. And I could hear him saying to me, Mama, promise me you'll go on. And I said, I promise you, son. I promise you. Wow. Time flies, ladies. My time is up today. Thank you. Amazing story, Linda.